Okay, we're going to have a little bit of fun with entwined lance. Now this uh, American Kempo technique is often done where we lose control of the weapon when we pair it and we do a two finger eye poke, and we reverse it and we do a back knuckle. The reason why it's commonly taught that way, I would argue, is it shows a family grouping with calming the storm and that we do the same when we do calming. But if you think of a weapons rule of controlling the weapon, disarming the weapon, and then using your technique, we don't want to lose control of the weapon. So rather than showing the loss of control, and I know some would argue, well, they, they might drop the weapon, and I think that's the key point, they might. Um, I want to show how you can control the weapon at all times and slightly modify um, entwined lance. So entwined lance starts with their left foot forward. I'm going to teach it with the hands down first, but I'm going to show you a, a, a better way in a second. And it's a high stab, and as the stab comes, I twist in place and I hand sword and take his spot. Now if I hit him hard with the hand sword or a forearm, I could simply pass this and that's an easy disarm because this isn't the sharp part of the knife. So I can make it really, really short where the stab comes, I take his spot and I just simply disarm, maybe cut his wrist, I could do that. But that wouldn't keep within the entwined lance technique, so I'm going to modify it as such to keep within the technique and not get the disarm so early. So as the high stab comes, I parry and I take the spot. Now if the head turns back in, I'm going to claw out. As I claw in, I kick and I kick his other knee and I back knuckle. And if I do this, that's an easy break. And then I could do my pass. Here's the sharp part of the knife at the bottom and I could disarm. Okay, so I'm going to show you that uh, again. So here comes the high stab. I parry, I take his spot. If he's still holding on the knife and the head comes and I can't connect, I rip the fingers and as I sweep out the one knee, I side kick and I back knuckle. Now, an easy disarm is the lone kimono. You can see that easy break there. But just to show you how to pass, we can wait and pass at the end and make the disarm, okay? Now, the problem with the opening, maybe we'll switch sides here, is that my hands are down. So my hand has to travel up to parry, which puts it at risk, okay? So one of the things that I propose, maybe just back up here, Darren, would be one hand low and one high, as if to go, hey, 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 please, you don't, I, we don't want to do anything here, guys. And then as he parries, my hand barely travels anywhere. It just takes a spot. I claw, I rip. Make the disarm and it's gone. So you can see my hand literally travel this way. Now some will say palm up would be more advantageous, but you've got to understand it's not a side swing where I'm carrying this way. It's a straight thrust, knife down, knife blade down. So my hand is barely traveling at all. Take the spot, head turns in, claw, rip the eyes, kick, see, boom, kick the pass and I disarm the move. Now, that doesn't really keep with disarming before a technique. I'm just showing that to show how to make entwined lance more functional. At any time, I could produce the disarm. So he comes with a high stab, boom. I could claw, claw in and pass at this point and take the knife. If I got him, I'll be careful on this one, with my forearm, oh boy, he's already in pain. I could disarm at that point. If I didn't feel I connected hard enough, by the way, watch how I don't step, I just in place twist. Boom. See! I could go through my entire technique and do it. But it's better, I would argue, to start with one hand high so it barely travels. Now, if you know the technique calming the storm, same idea, I square off the shoulder and I lose contact. And I, I have to say this, the opponent miraculously holds their arm out, which they would never happen. Defying the storm is more advantageous because I maintain control of the weapon. The reason why I tell you that is that I could do a change up. Okay, so the definition of a change up in Kembo 
is starting with one technique, but then changing into another technique, such as um, entwine lance and defying the storm. That's different than a graft, because a graft starts with one, goes to another, but then comes back to the original. So if I do a change up, let's say he does the, the high step, and I hit him. Now, if I didn't connect hard enough, that left hand's gonna come. Boom. But because I stretched him out on his weak point, I can easily break his elbow and go into defying the storm. So as he comes with the high step, see, ha, now look where I'm at. See, take the knife, and I can change it up into defying. So all I did was I went, nobody home, make my strike, see, break that, give him a little elbow, arm in the armpit, look at the control here, guys. Knee, elbow, I could even do this, and pull the arm out of the socket if I wanted. But that just shows you a few different ways to view and see entwine lance from how it's standardly taught.